What up, Toombots? Uh, there's really not much going on in the game right now, and it's probably going to pick up soon, maybe in the next month or two. So, in the meantime, I'm going to go through every single character, real character, in this game, and give you guys a character breakdown, character spotlight, whatever you want to call, and I'm going to do it alphabetically, because why would I do it any other way? There's no actual any other reason. But first and foremost, what I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about the character first, because maybe you don't know who Adam Warlock is. It's very possible. So, starting off, first character in the game right now, under the letter A, Adam Warlock. Newer character, released midway through 2021. You know about him, right? But who is Adam Warlock? So, Adam Warlock first showed up on the pages of Fantastic Four number 66 in like September of 1967 as a character called Him. Uh, later on, he became Warlock, and even further later on, he became Adam Warlock, and he's kind of just been some cross between a Superman-type character for basically the entirety of his existence, a little bit more cosmic-oriented. When you really look at him as a character and you look at some of his powers and abilities, uh, he kind of just can do anything he wants. Uh, because his powers come from the fact that he was created, he's a genetically perfect being, we've heard that before, uh, you end up with a lot of powers and a lot of hand-waving stuff in the comics, but basically the most important things you need to know about Adam Warlock is he has a symbiotic bond with the soul gem which grants him access to soul world uh an entire version of reality that he can travel through and not necessarily command but gain life force from uh he is the avatar of life he is peak superhuman physiology think your thor style strength uh he has energy powers he can teleport superhuman speed which is unnecessary when you can teleport, can fly, and after everything else, is actually immortal, in so far that when he dies, no one can claim his soul. So he just is born again eventually. Uh, fundamentally immortal? Pretty reasonable. Basically one of the most powerful beings in all of Marvel, depending on who's writing the story. So, now that you got a little bit of a backstory on who Adam Warlock is, let's talk about him in the game, right? So, in the game, uh, st standing pretty standard, Hero, Cosmic, Mystic, Infinity Watch, which is a more recent, I think we've started in 2015, comic run. Sure, he's been a Guardian of the Galaxy before, he's been... A whole bunch of things. I don't think the only thing he's ever not been is an actual Avenger, even though he's shown up in quite a bit of Avenger storylines. Uh, and then a support character. Kind of an interesting decision to make him a support in a game. But he's, you know, on par with, if not more powerful than, the Silver Surfer more often than not. So it's a good baseline of comparison for a character that's being entered into the game more often than not. When you take a look at Adam Warlock's kit, the biggest and most important things about it are the cosmic and the mystic tags. Uh, most of this game does filter you towards either uh, a origin or a, a location-specific goal, whether it be raids or dark dimensions. So between the cosmic and the mystic tags, you get a lot of value out of Adam Warlock as a character. The support tag is kind of flush with powerful characters, so he doesn't really stand out that much as a support, but... Knowing that there's probably only a decent number of supports worth working on, it kind of saves you a little bit of that extra value for your ISOs as you work them up. Totally worth it to put uh, plenty of ISOs in him if you feel the need to. Uh, as for his general abilities, start from the bottom, Avatar of Life. On spawn, apply Safeguard, an ability that prevents characters who have it from losing their buffs and immunity to self and Infinity Watch allies. If health is full at the start of a match, revive once with 60% of this character's health. On revive, gain death proof, regeneration, and defense up. Then clear all negative effects from self and all Infinity Watch allies. On turn, clear regeneration. You know how to read. I'm not going to go through this. You probably even know who he is. You can look at him in-game. But 
the general takeaway from this is he is quite literally a staple of his team. He helps his team in every way, like a support character does. Great. No, absolutely no notes on, on what his passive does. Uh, the increase you get when this character drops below 20% health gets more deflect and give an extra 10% to everybody. Huge boost to the team. Don't really feel it outside of the team, though. Um, not as incredibly powerful a character in Marvel Strike Force as he is in the Marvel Universe, but can't get everything. Uh, as for Power Overwhelming, apply Safeguard, we've already talked about it. Attack Primary Target and apply Stun. Chain to one target within two spaces of the primary target and apply Stun. Great. Huge, huge Stun potential. Chaining to a, any target that's worth targeting to. Can change, cannot be counterattack, can change to stealth. Damage is a little bit low for a very high energy attack, but on his team, absolutely phenomenal ability. Outside of his team, a little bit less powerful than some ults we've seen, but ultimately, not bad. No, no criticisms here. And then the tier 4 is just a little bit more. Enfeebling Blast, ready on turn 1. More damage than his ult to one target, and then two turns of ability block. Then, apply ability block to all enemy villain protectors, and apply disrupted to all enemy protectors. This attack is unavoidable. This is probably his best attack. It's most useful, ready on turn one. He's not super fast on his team, but outside of his team, he's unreasonable. We'll look at his stats in a little bit. Good attack. Totally worth the upgrade. Uh, getting a little bit more damage is mo more important than, I would say, the disrupted for two turns. That one turn is usually just enough to get them to stop taunting, that kind of thing. That's all you really want to do with a protector. And then the basic, probably one of the first characters to have a really overpowered basic. Attack primary target for decent damage, prolong the duration of all negative effects, excluding the ones he puts on, buy one, and then apply two bleeds. Kind of unfortunate that it doesn't extend them, but hey, eh, whatever. Really good basic, really makes him work well outside of his team. Uh, just on its own, and then you get a little bit extra value outside of that. Uh, Isos, you can't really go wrong with anything. A lot of his attacks hit multiple people, so Raider is reasonable. He doesn't quite heal, uh, so Healer is not great. And Fortifier, he doesn't have to stay alive. He has one of the best health pools in the game. Skirmisher, unreasonable on him, uh, just because you don't need to rely on him countering that much. And on his team, as you know, it's very unlikely you're going to need anything but Striker on him. Uh, and Striker benefits because it gives him a little bit of extra damage, and as you go further down the Striker list, you get a little bit more, not just here, but, you know, 5% bonus damage. And as a character with one of the highest health pools in the game, as you can see at 105k, it's pretty decent health pool. Pretty decent damage without incredible investment. Totally worth it to take there. Outside of that, we only have the facts, right? Where are we going to use Adam Warlock? So this is kind of, I guess, a rating system, per se. So in, in Arena, on offense and defense, right now, absolutely phenomenal character with his team. Outside of his team, a little bit less valuable, but more people than not are going to be using some kind of hybrid version of the team as they're putting it together. So if you just happen across Adam Warlock on his next pass... Don't worry if you haven't worked up Moon Knight or, sorry, Moon Dragon or anybody at that time. You'll be okay. Uh, pretty reasonable outside of it on offense and defense too, outside of that specific team. So pretty aces as far as an arena team goes. Same thing can be said for War on War offense and defense. Him as a part of his team, truly phenomenal, right? You don't really want to keep him separate. As an offense team, they could beat pretty much anything, including themselves. As a defense team... Takes very, very specific teams to beat them, so that's his value there. Outside of his team, again, you're not going to get much in those game modes. He doesn't really do, like, splash value, but you could probably put something together. He's a pretty powerful overall character. Just doesn't really counter anything on his own. Then, maybe you can look at some of their game modes. So we can look at or RTA. Well, on his own... He really doesn't do much. Uh, the res is actually very reasonable for him, but without the rest of his team, he's not really better than some of the other characters that emulate what he does. Like Zemo's turn one ability block is very fast, or Hela's ability to buff spread happens 
faster with a Greg. So not an amazing character in those situations, but he does have a revive, so positive there. Moving to raids, there are a couple of raids you can use him in, uh, and that's more of a added bonus than something you should work towards. I wouldn't recommend anybody work on Adam Warlock because of his raid skill, but since you might be working on him for, as we've said, arena or war, you might as well use him in the few situations you can. There's Mystic Nodes, specifically in the beta raid and in some of the Doom raids that he might be able to benefit you a little bit in. Not the best option, but a very good option. Uh, and then, of course, any Cosmic Lane. Him on his team through Cosmic Lanes in Alpha uh, of the Greek raid, absolutely phenomenal. The one downside, can't be used in Gamma, so he loses a little bit of value there. Blitz isn't a game mode that we have to talk about for any reason. So then we go to the last game mode, which is Dark Dimension. Is he good in Dark Dimension? Uh, the truth is, the legendary pool is so tight that he's good by proxy or by process of elimination because Iron Man and Nick Fury are not as powerful in those game modes. So having a stun, having the ability to spread some debuffs, um, having an ability block... Very reasonable. Giant health pool, incredibly reasonable. Not a terrible choice in any way for Dark Dimension. But just a reminder, Dark Dimension 4 specifically existed before Adam Warlock did, and it was beaten with four characters. In case you're wondering, it's Ebony Maw, Phoenix, Jubilee, and Invisible Woman. So if those four can do it, at this point, again, if you've already worked on him for one thing, you... Can totally just bring him in. Totally worth it, right? Gear tier 15 in a character that's important in two or four halves of game modes. Probably very reasonable. So, as far as a character is concerned, Adam Warlock is definitely an S tier character. He is among the best characters in the game. Keep in mind, when you compare characters, you compare them to the rest of the game, not some arbitrary metric uh, that doesn't matter. So, so for every Adam Warlock character, you can always see a character like Aim Scientist or Hydra Scientist or, or something that just don't even out. And when you have those bottom of the barrel characters, you can do a comparison and say, oh, no, he's absolutely great. But then when you start comparing him to good characters, that's where you can see he shine. So definitely a good character, definitely worth uh, looking into. And if by some chance for any reason you want to find out more about Adam Warlock as a character... One of the best storylines you can read regarding him before the Infinity Watch, before anything that's current, is Marvel Premiere number one, April 1972. Put a link in the description below in a place you can probably find that comic if you're interested in reading it. But uh, really awesome to put him out, not quite as a villain or as a hero, but an interesting backstory for an interesting character. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to be doing them all the time because there's nothing else to talk about in Marvel Strike Force right now. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I will catch you later.